Welcome to the next chapter. So now we are at a thing called vibrato. Vibrato is the next level of doing scoops or is the next level of bending notes. Okay, how could that be? Because when you when you make your pitch fluctuate up and down, it's going flat to sharp, flat to sharp, back up to. So like you're going going like straight tone, la, <laughs> no vibrato. But if you start getting like an opera person, la, all that, uh, that's vibrato, okay? Vibrato. I like the way it sounds, vibrato. So we like to add that to our playing, not as something we want to use all the time. It's something we want to use as another toy, another secret weapon to adding soul, another way to, to, to diversify what we're doing. So I'm going to play something in the key of G right now, straight. Oh, shucks, I did vibrato. I'm going to play something straight. Okay, now I'm going to add some vibrato, vibrato to it, like this. Hear how much the sound changed? Vibrato adds a little sauce to it, but it's, it's something you don't want to do all the time because there's a thing is doing too much. So you want to have a clear, nice tone, and then at times you want to add that sauce. You want to add that extra flavor. You want to add that extra something, that extra oomph, which is some vibrato like a singer would do, and it's going to add way more to your playing. Okay, so how are we going to attack this? Well, we're going to attack it where we left off with scoops and with bending the notes. We started doing it on beat. We went like one, two, we went quarter notes. We went ya, ya, three, four. Well, we want to do the same thing. Start back with them quarter notes again on G. Okay, cool. So that's where we start. We start getting a slow tempo and we take them in quarter notes. No problem. One, yo. You know, now what we're going to do is we want to try to work on them with eighth notes. And the way you count eighth notes is one and two and three and four and. So what we're going to do, we have an extra beat in between each snap right now. And so we're going to actually try to play strict. We're not going to try to be musical. We're going to try to have our timing match. Notice my jaw needs to do just like that. So, if you can master doing those two tempos, uh, you're going to be at the beginning of, of beginning to create some good vibrato because vibrato, in my opinion, is not strict when you're playing music. It's more naturally felt. And sometimes people have different ways of doing it by the what feels good to them. So, depending on the music, you may use a different speed or you might play with different speeds, but you're probably not going to be strict because it might not be that musical. But learning it strict helps you learn control and discipline. So then you can deviate from there. You always have to have a foundation to lift off from. So I'm, I'm going to say quarter notes. And when I say after I, when I say eighth notes, we're going to switch, OK? Quarter notes. One, two, three, and. <laughs> All 
right? We got to do eighth notes. Ready, go. Let's do it again. Eighth notes. Last time, eighth notes. One, two, three, let's go. Okay, now we're going to practice one more tempo to, to develop control, and that's six tings. So, six tings, it takes two more beats to equal an eighth it's like <laughs> so so you know where it takes two beats to make one beat from an eighth note to a quarter note it takes four sixteenths to make an eighth note so we count it like this one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a so we want to practice this with a slower tempo still using that g but we want to try to hit 16s. If you need to go slower, we can go slower. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Six things again. Last time. One, two, three, go. So now we have we have practiced how to do to move from scoops or bending notes in, right into vibrato, which is going to add a whole lot to your playing. It's another toy. It's another toy. So we're building pretty good. We're building pretty good. So in your practice routine, you know, this may be something that you want to take. Take another five minutes to work on along with the next thing that I'm going to teach you. And the next thing that I'm going to teach you involves what we call grace notes. So, a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and add that to this video instead of doing another video and changing that chapter. So, grace notes. Grace notes are notes that we use sometimes to, like, get that thing that singers do. You know that thing that singers do when they go, like, Amazing grace, all that. Uh, now some of that is scooping. Amazing grace. It's almost like three different, like a total of three notes to make it. Dun 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 dun. So let me demonstrate it for you right quick. Okay, so how did I do that? Okay, so one good grace note or trill that you can do in the key of C is from E to F. And then you have to resolve because it don't have the same effect if you stay on F, right? But if you go from E to F kind of quickly and come back down to that E, So when I put it on Amazing Grace, matter of fact, let me let you see my fingers of those who might be following my fingers. So how did you do that? Let me let you see. So 
So now let's let's count. One, two, three, four. We went from the third note to the fourth to to the fourth note kind of quickly to create that. Back from so we went from three to four back to three. That's all it is. So in the key of C is E F. Now let's try it together. E F E. Now practice going a little faster. Almost like a trill. This is what you hear people, singers do a lot of times. This is one of the things that, that we use. So, I see me going. I can go. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, and it's not it's not hard to do at all. So it's just a basically a mix between the third and fourth degree of the scale, kind of kind of fast to bef to get that grace note. Now there's another one you can use. So in the key of C that we're in, the the note that you're gonna start on is A. The note that you're gonna end on is G. So what is A in the key of C? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's your sixth note. And G is your fifth note. So we're basically starting on the fifth degree and we're ending, I mean the sixth degree, we're ending on the fifth degree. So now I'm telling you this way because I want you to be able to apply this to your other scales. So you won't be like, well I know how to do it in C, but I don't know how to do it in G. I don't know how to do it in, 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 um, in D. Yes you do. Think about it from the perspective of degrees like we did with modes. And this will tell you like, oh, I know how to find that. I don't have to, I don't know the notes, but I know the numbers. And because I know the numbers and because I know my scales, I can find it. So this is the sixth to the fifth. So in between that, we're gonna sharp, we're gonna make sharp that sixth degree. So if you were to make A sharp, you would get A a sharp. <laughs> that sounds like an oxymoron. But a term I like to use is B flat because A sharp and B flat are the same note. Okay, so with that in mind, the, the B flat that I like to use between these is I like to use the A here and I like to use the, the palm key over the side key here, the bottom one. If you push that together with A, you get B flat. And I like to use the side of my hand. I don't like to use my tip of my finger. A. Now I push it in while holding A. I get B flat. So one way you can do this is go. A. B flat. A. G. And then speed gives it that singer thing. I'm going to do an octave higher right now. And you see some people use it even more like. So. Let's try it together right quick. One, we're going to go like this. One, two, B flat, A, G. Try it with me. One, two, three, four. Do it again. One more time. Now, if you add a little speed to it, you have 
So you put those two things together in songs, you can add to a melody just like Amazing Grace, like it's nothing because, because it's right there under your finger within the melody. See what I mean? See, I just use it a few different ways. Now, that time I went down to D, I said. But see, it opens up other possibilities. And it's really just a grace note. It's really just a flicker of another note in between. So we saw that we can go. We could go up from the six, like sharp to six, meaning we have to go up a, a half step. And I know we haven't learned chromatic notes right now, but for right now, I'll tell you that that the next note up from A is B flat or A sharp. So you go from A to B flat to A down to G. And G is what we're resolving on, which is our five. The other one that we had was from three to the four, back to the three, which is E, F, E. And sometimes you can add that D to it. Speed makes things sound sometimes better, but you can still do it slow. These things still work. You have the ability to manipulate them any way you please because we plan from your heart, your soul. What do you hear in your head? That's what you can do with these things. So in this in this chapter, we, we went over scoops. I mean, no, vi vibrato, vibrato. We went over vibrato. And then I started showing you how to use a couple of grace notes or trills that, that work very well to making you achieve a singer sound on the saxophone and I gave you the numbers on how to find them so this could be another thing that you use these two things for five minutes of practice now you're up to 20 minutes I believe 20 minutes of practice and you're and you're getting these things under your belt you're consistent with them you're having a little bit of fun especially when we start getting to vibrato and <laughs> and these grace notes and now it can lead you to some deeper things in the future and, you're, and you've only lost like 15 or 20 minutes of your day getting these in, especially if you have an hour of time to practice. Or maybe you can practice later. You can do more fun things, work on a song or whatever, but you got these things in that's going to really help you in the long haul. So practice, practice, practice. Put that seed in the ground so you can reap the harvest of being very smooth and soulful.